Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to call for that daily bread. Now, this is a command the Lord gave to us, and we have to obey Him. And we obey Him in faith with great expectations in our hearts. So, are you ready to receive? Declare these words with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Trust me, a miracle is happening in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 78. Psalm 78 and verse 5. I want to show you something from last week, we were talking about the purpose of the law and commands. Now, I want to take it a step further this week and share with you on what I titled the testimony of Jesus. So look at this now, verse 5, Psalm 78. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Note this, he established a testimony in Jacob. Praise God. He established a testimony in Jacob. Now, we established last week that when God begins to walk in your life, the first thing he will do is to establish a testimony in your life. He's going to do things to show that he is God. And now based on that, he will begin to give you certain laws that you will live or commands that you will operate by. Now those laws are proof that you are the one or the custodian of that testimony. And that's how it works. Praise God. Now we're taking it a step further this week to look at the testimony of Jesus. Now, everyone who is born again, see, must listen to this message because we, if you have been born again, it simply means that you have come in contact with the testimony of Jesus. Now, it's important that you don't just come in contact with the testimony of Jesus, but that you are the custodian of that testimony. Let me show you something in Revelation chapter 19. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 19. And verse 10. Revelation 19 and verse 10. It says, And I fell, now this is John, and he was receiving message from from a being from heaven. And he said, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Notice that. Here's this man talking to John. And I got to this point, John felt, man, you, you've said a lot. You've said a lot. <laughs> and I, he said, he fell down to worship this person. I mean, you, you know so much, so you must be a God. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. He said, I fell down at his feet to worship him. And he said, this being stopped him. Now, let's not go there. I mean, let's not start talking about who's this person. Let's, let's not go there for today. Praise God. Because sometimes you enter into something and it really distracts you from where you're going. Not that it's bad, it's good. But, but we, we have to maintain our focus and trust the Spirit of God that one day He will get us into this. Who's this person that John was talking, about, talking to? Praise God. But look at his description. He says, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. He said, I also have the testimony of Jesus. And then look at what he says now. He says, worship God. Why? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus 
is the spirit of prophecy. Now, he's saying here that, look, I bear the testimony of Jesus. Like you, John. Now, that's confirming something that John also bore the testimony of Jesus. Now, let me show you Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to come back here, but let me show you something John said in chapter 1, book of Revelation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John chapter 1, look at verse, from verse 1. He said, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, watch this verse 2 now. He sent, he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now, John testifying here said, I bear the testimony of Jesus. Praise God. Meaning, if you bear the testimony of Jesus, you should know. You should know. Why? Because, you know, coming from last week, that testimony is not just something you hear. That testimony is something that becomes established in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at, let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, I, John, chapter 1, same Revelation, chapter 1. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isles of Patmos, was in the isles that's called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So John said, look, I suffered. I was, I was taken to the isles of Patmos for one reason. What reason? Because of the testimony of Jesus that I bear. Now he told us in verse 2 that I bear the testimony of Jesus. Now in verse 9 he said, look, I was thrown into the isles of Patmos because of the testimony that I bear. Testimony of Jesus. Now this is to tell you that the testimony of Jesus is not just something that is in your heart alone. The testimony of Jesus is something that others can see that you carry that you bear it. Praise God. So they must see, others will see it. That, hey, this guy carries a testimony and that testimony is not just any other testimony. It is the testimony of Jesus. Let me show you something also in, John, in Revelation chapter 12. Follow me there now. Revelation chapter 12. We see John suffering because of the testimony of Jesus. So now look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. Watch this now. It says, And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, which keep the commandment of Jesus and have, which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Jesus. Did you see this? Now, you know the story if you read the book of Revelation. This, this, this woman was about to give birth to a child and the devil was really interested in that child. But God helped the woman and she gave birth to the child and he handpicked that child and then the, the, the dragon went after the woman to destroy her. But then God saved the woman. The Bible said that it helped the woman and she was able to escape from the dragon and when that happened the dragon was angry praise god with the woman and then the dragon went to make war with the remnant of her seed now there is something he said concerning this her seed that the dragon went after who are they they are those that keep the commandment of god and they have the testimony of Jesus. Now listen to me. Satan will be mad at you if you carry the testimony of Jesus. And let me explain something to you. Not everybody that is called a child of God carries the testimony of Jesus. Not even everybody that is a pastor knows what the testimony of Jesus is. What is the testimony of Jesus? I'll show you. 
John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Let's begin from there and I'll take you deeper in explaining this, if not from today. We'll go start that from tomorrow. John chapter 3. I love this. From verse 31. Now, here's John the Baptist speaking concerning Jesus. John chapter 3 from verse 31. It says, He that cometh from above is above all. Take note of these words. He that comes from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Now look at 32. And what he had seen and heard that he testified. This one who comes from above have seen something. He has heard something. And that thing which he has seen and heard is what he is testifying. And no man received his testimony. No man received his testimony. Hey, but guess what? Look at verse 33. He that had received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. Now, he didn't say it's not possible for any man to receive his testimony. He said men did not receive his testimony. But those who were able to receive his testimony, he says those ones have said to the record that God is true. Now, John tells us here that Jesus, it was Jesus he was referring to. He's saying Jesus is the one who came from above. He's saying what Jesus have heard and seen, where? In heaven. What he has heard and seen, where? In the heart of the Father. Now, when we say in heaven, understand something here. He's not just saying you went to heaven and you saw things, then you came to this earth and you start talking about them. For example, when Jesus said the will of God be done, that we should pray the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, people don't understand that statement. People think he's talking about, oh, the same way there are paves, there are road um, paved with gold in heaven, let it be done on the earth. No, that's not what he was referring to. What John was, what sorry, what Jesus was actually saying we should pray is that the will of God should be done on earth the same way it is written in heaven. The same way it is in the heart of God, heart of the Father in heaven. That's what he was referring to. So he's not referring to go take pictures in heaven and then come. Now, of course, if that is the plan that God has for the earth, if we follow his heart, if we follow his plan, we will achieve the same thing. Praise God. But he is referring to what he... So the same thing when John said what he has seen and heard in heaven. He is talking about the things that the Father has written. The things that are in his... What the heaven, is, heaven has books. The Bible spoke about the books that were opened in the book of Revelation. The Bible spoke in Malachi... The, the, chapter 4 it says those that know chapter 3 I think those that fear the Lord and they talk about him he says the Lord opened a book of remembrance concerning those people so there are books in heaven praise God yeah there are books in heaven now and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus the Father will open your portion of the books which he has written and diverse manifestations will begin to take place in your life even from today from those things that are written concerning you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to look at this scripture again, John chapter 3 from verse 30. Let's, let's take it from verse 32. It says, And what he had seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. He that had received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. Anyone who have received the testimony of Jesus, what is the testimony of Jesus? The thing Jesus is testifying. It says when you receive that testimony, you are setting your seal. It says, he, he that had received the testimony have said to his seal that God is true. Now let's go back to Revelation and we'll round off from there quickly. Revelation chapter 19. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. It says, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Let me go to this part. For the testimony, that's the last part of it. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. You want to know what the spirit of prophecy is? It is what Jesus is testifying. That's why John said, anyone who believes the testimony of Jesus have said to his seal that God is true. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know our time is up for today, but I'm going to continue from here to explain this so we understand it and then move on into the testimony of Jesus. God bless you. Listen, your life is about to go into a new dimension. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.